Plastic Surgery Talk, brought to you by Mentor, maker of memory gel breast implants. The plastic surgery procedure with the highest rate of patient satisfaction is breast reduction. Mae West once said, too much of a good thing is wonderful, but women with large breasts will tell you otherwise. Large breasts can be both physically, socially, and even financially a huge problem. Today on Plastic Surgery Talk, we'll talk about breast reduction and what you need to know before you go. Stay tuned, it's going to be a great show. Welcome to everybody's favorite show, Plastic Surgery Talk. I'm Dr. Bill Adams, and today we'll be talking about breast reduction. Now, women will tell you that having large breasts isn't necessarily the best thing. We do know that breast augmentation is the number one cosmetic surgery procedure, but large breasts can cause problems such as back pain, neck pain, grooving of the bra straps. Breast reduction has been a procedure that's been used for years to give patients a very high rate of satisfaction. And to help us sort this out, we have with us in the studio today, Dr. Joe Gerskavitz from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Joe, great to have you here. Yep, pleasure. So, Joe, you're a board-certified plastic surgeon, but you're also an accomplished triathlete. You just finished a Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. How did that go? Uh, that was exhilarating. Tough, but exhilarating. Thanks. I know it takes a lot of training, so uh, congratulations yeah. on uh, finishing that. And, Thanks. And uh, quite good standing, too. Thanks. So Joe and I have been friends for a long time. We uh, run and co-chair what's called the Hot Topics Forum mm -hmm. in Plastic Surgery, which is held twice a year, and we've, we've become quite close over mm -hmm. the past uh, five or six years doing that. It really is a great forum, isn't it? Yep, and we're just like Siamese twins running the thing. So. And it brings in you know, new things that are around the corner that nobody knows about that we'll see here in this country in about three years. So it's nice to keep ahead of the curve. Yeah. So. Breast reduction, mm -hmm. it's a big topic, uh, very important aspect of plastic surgery with, again, as we mentioned, very high rate of patient satisfaction. But women with large breasts really do have symptoms. Uh, it really does impede their quality of life. Sure. They have, like you mentioned, back, neck, shoulder pain. They've got a skeletal imbalance. A lot of times they get grooves in the shoulders. And x-ray studies and CAT scans have shown that over the years, they get deterioration of the discs in their neck and lower back a lot faster than normal people. So, I mean, it's a real, real medical problem. It is a medical problem in the sense that even third-party payers, insurance companies will actually pay for patients to have a breast reduction. Right. Insurance is uh, something that will cover the surgery depending on the weight that's removed. And there's a scale that, that talks about your height and weight and how much breast tissue is removed. But also, you got to remember that there's a lot of pushback from insurance companies, too. They don't want to pay. so they, And they don't care if your clothes don't fit or how you look. And they don't even care if you're having pain. They just want to make sure you fit into their formula. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think that, that patients come on, up on the short end of the stick a lot of times yeah. on that equation, mm -hmm. which is, um, it is unfortunate mm -hmm. because we know that these procedures can significantly help patients yeah. achieve a better quality of life. Yeah, well, like you mentioned, they're our happiest patients. Yep. So let's do this. At the beginning, I'd like to kind of talk about some just different types of breast reduction so our viewers can kind of understand the different levels of breast re reduction and what those are. So we've kind of broken that up into three things, liposuction breast reduction, some of the minimal scar breast reductions, and then what would be called a full breast reduction or a keyhole or an anchor reduction. So let's start with liposuction breast reduction. How common is that, and, w and what, what exactly is liposuction breast reduction? Well, liposuction breast reduction is reducing the size of the breast with just liposuction alone. And years ago, they did a little bit with the ultrasonic, and the conjecture was that maybe, you know, the ultrasound changes your DNA and it could, could cause cancer because, remember, the breast is a cancer-causing organ. So pretty much when this is done, it's done with traditional, regular liposuction with a wetting technique. But this is done pretty uncommonly. I would say probably less than 1% of breast reductions are liposuction. Would you agree, more or less? Yeah, and I think you know, it's a really a limited number of patients are candidates for that. As you said, applies to a very small amount 
of patients that are mm -hmm. candidates. Right. So the next level would be this thing called minimal scar breast reduction. Some people call that vertical breast reduction. Tell us a little bit about that technique. Yeah, well, a lot of times you have to raise the nipple and, and in addition to taking out the breast tissue. So you've got an incision that's all the way around the nipple area and then down in front. And so when you look at the breast after surgery, you're seeing a circle and then a little bit of a scar down in front. The other thing that we'll do sometimes is make a wavy line around the nipple because if you look at a natural nipple, it kind of fades out. You don't want this deer in headlights look. And so I've, I've written a paper on the zigzag wavy line periareolar incision and it's just kind of a line around the nipple that makes it look more natural and then scar down in front. And another type of, of minimal scar, you mentioned a periareolar technique and that can be another type of breast reduction that's done with a small scar. Is that a common procedure for you? Uh, no, not for me. And I think that that's probably about as rare as the liposuction one because a lot of times you, in order to qualify for insurance, you have to take off enough tissue that just getting it out through the nipple area wouldn't really suffice. But some people do do that and it is described. And if you're a candidate for it, that's a great way to go. So the patients, just so um, everybody's clear, the, what patients are good candidates for these kind of vertical, minimal scar breast reduction techniques? I think people that are in the smaller double D cup range and maybe people that are, you're gonna take off about a pound on. But in addition, it has to do a little bit with your surgeon. Um, depending on skin color, if darker skin, you have worse scarring, so you might be more compelled to do, do a shorter scar for that reason too. And, and certainly, I think all of this is, is inherently underscoring the importance of going to somebody, a board certified plastic surgeon that can sort all this out because we've already talked about five different things and it can be confusing. You need to really match the procedure to the patient. Right, you wanna make sure your surgeon's board certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery and is a member of one of the two main societies, American Society for Plastic Surgery and then the Aesthetic Society or the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. Okay, well great, we're gonna to go to a break and then when we come back, we're gonna talk about full breast reduction, kind of the big kahuna that takes you.